Hi, Ian Zepp again. All right, this is the second video in this particular uh, video phase. Uh, here we'll be discussing the uh, way that we implemented our adding a set of products to an opportunity. So in case you missed the previous video, I'll step through this again very briefly. We select the product set, we click Save and Return, and it copies all of those product items with the appropriate quantities and sales prices and discounts to our opportunity. So how do we do this? Well, everything is wrapped up into one method uh, called save. So we've overridden the default controller save action. So every standard controller comes with a save action. Uh, we've referenced it here, but then in our add product set extension, we've gone ahead and uh, overridden it. And so the first thing we do is we have two sanity checks. Now these are internal errors. These should not ever be displayed to the user, but if they are, it means that something went wrong with the code. So as a, as a personal best practice, I like to put these types of error messages in there um, to make it clear that something went wrong and it wasn't a normal uh, expected failure. It was something that shouldn't have happened. So then what we've done is we have a try block. So this is another pattern that I like. I like to do my ifs and my else if statements to catch errors at the top and then do an else try and finally follow up with a catch with the specific exception type I'm looking for at the bottom. So in our main body, uh, in our main save body, we have uh, several major sections. The first thing we need to do is we need to find all of the price book entries. So within Salesforce, uh, products are stored on the product table. Opportunity line items are a relationship to a product, but they're also a relationship to a price book. And price books can have associations to many different products themselves. That, that junction relationship is called a price book entry. So we've actually really got two junction entries here. We've got a price book entry, uh, which is a, a junction custom or junction standard object that associates a product with a price book. And then we've got an opportunity to line item, which is similar, only in this case it associates an opportunity, a price book entry, uh, and a price book entry. The price book entry actually contains the product itself, so we, only, we don't have to reference the product at the opportunity to line item level. We can just reference the price book entry. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to go find all of the price book entries that match one of the products on our list of selected products. So when, we've, when we chose our product set here, this list here contains uh, relationships to a product. So what we do is we go iterate over that list and we extract all of the product IDs and return that as a unique set. That set then gets dropped into the SQL query so this open square bracket and the end square bracket designate a SQL query our, where we're looking for a product to ID that's in that set and also a price book entry with a price book ID that matches the price book ID on our opportunity. So we've just defined a convenience method up here at the top called get opportunity. All that does is go back to the controller that we had saved fetches the record and casts it as an opportunity. And so then all of the fields that were selected, such as here, in our page view, are pre-filled in to the opportunity object. So we can use them down below. And then what we do is as we're iterating over this list of price books, we're building a map. Uh, a map that goes from the product ID associated with that price book to the price book entry itself. And so that allows us later on down here to actually look up by product ID the associated price book entry. And so I will get more into that in the follow-up technical video.